he gets it at the crack of dawn every day. So, yeah. so, so far, he has given me 12. Um, I know there's more coming, but we're just going to uh, go over one today. Let's not be so enthusiastic. <laughs> All right. Anyway. <clears throat> Has anybody had a difficult week with people? Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. My sister, she's like telling some of the stuff that she's been going through. And I was like, you know, it started with the Reformation Center as far as us. And, uh, and then, you know, getting sick before Arizona and all that stuff. Um, and then uh, I, I told her, I said, you know, I do know that certain times the enemy will do like an onslaught. Remember that, Gigi? I think the Hordes of Hell kind of brought that out by Rip Joyner. That he will release a certain uh, type of demon in either regions or a, a country or wherever. Like, for example, anger. You know, like you'll go everywhere and everybody's mad, you know, or whatever it is. And it's actually a demonic um, surge. And uh, so I told her, I said, the only thing I can figure is maybe just a demonic surge. And she goes, you know what I think it is? She said, I think that 2015 is our year as believers and that we have been decreeing the word so he is testing it. And I was like, amen. You know, I mean, you just feel it. And uh, so anyway, if you have been going through poop, Literally. Literally? Mm -hmm. I've got a funny story, but I am not going to record it. So, about poop, actually. Um, all right. I'll tell that when we shut it down. Um, okay, so Jeremiah 17, 5 through 10. God gave this one to me today. I really felt the Holy Spirit on it. And... Um, it says in verse 5, we'll just going to read through it and I'll give you all several points. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength. And that word strength means arm. Whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. And then he says something that doesn't seem to fit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. So it's like it doesn't fit, but God showed me it really does. But we're going to look at the first thing. Putting your trust in a man. Now, this is different from trusting people. Okay, so I'm not saying I trust people. But when you put your trust in someone, that means you're looking to them as your source of happiness, uh, financial prosperity, whatever it is. It's kind of like the phileo thing. Uh, for your benefit, for your affection of what you want, you'll begin to put your trust in a person instead of the Lord. And so that's what we're talking about. But it says, uh, putting your trust in man, either other people or yourself, opens the door to poverty and it prevents success. It's also a sign that your heart has departed from the Lord. And I don't remember where the story is. I think it's like one of the kings. But there was a king that was surrounded by an army. And instead of praying to the Lord for help, he actually contacted Egypt. And then uh, the Lord you know, said, well, because you didn't trust me, you're going to be overran. And then there was another man, I think, that was also in kings that he was sick and he went to doctors before he even prayed. God's not against doctors. He's not against medicine. But you don't run to them first. And so the Lord takes it actually very personally when we put our trust in other people. And you know what can also uh, be included in that? Systems. You know, like if you think that your job is your source of financial prosperity, you've put your trust in it. If you think that your husband 
or your kids or your source of happiness and peace, you put your trust in them. So it can be in anything. A lot of people will put their trust in following certain laws and principles instead of you know, following the Spirit of God because they have more faith in the principles than they do have faith in the Holy Spirit. So there's several things that you can do, but again, it's a sign of departing from God. The desert, parched places, salt land are all places of lack. They're all places of, uh, of poverty. Now, of course, in the wilderness, God took care of all their needs and things like that. So that's a different experience to prepare them for the promised land. And then, of course, they ended up dying in it because they didn't put their trust in God. But this is talking about never having enough. And with it comes anxiety. With it comes a fear. And also, the inability to see good or opportunities. Years ago, when God gave me the business idea of teaching people to use computers, this is what he told me. He said, I'm not giving you another business idea. I've already given you, I think he said, like two or three, and you've not done them. And so this is the last one. I didn't even recognize the previous two or three as business. I didn't recognize them from God. And so a lot of times we have in our hand things that he has given us to bring in prosperity, but either due to lack of diligence, lack of faith, or not even realizing it's from the Lord, a lot of times we don't do them. And I'll tell you something, we need people that work for people, that's important, or we wouldn't have any you know, employees. But for the Christian, it's, it's actually rare to gain wealth through an, uh, you know, being employed. You gain wealth by a business. And so, if you are putting your trust in man, you will not see the opportunities when they're right in front of your face. Okay? And um, the last two days, um, something very interesting has happened. A few weeks ago, uh, or maybe even a few months ago, Kent had this idea of an invention. And I'm not going to share it because it is being recorded. I don't want to take it. But when he shared it with me, I'm like, that's a really good idea. And he'd already done the research knew that there was nothing like it and is uh, related to fitness. And uh, so I thought, hmm, we might need to pursue that. Well, then I forgot. So the other day, I think it was yesterday even, I was driving in the car and I was listening to Gary Cassie. And I was even thinking about Ken. And all of a sudden, I heard the voice of the Lord say, Ken's invention is for me. And if you guys don't move on it quick, someone else is going to get the idea. So I called him up. Kent <laughs> reminded him of his invention. He goes, yeah. I said, I've already, God's already been giving me ideas on how to do it. Uh, I think we need to make a prototype. I told him what the Lord told me. And he said, all right, we'll do it. Then, that night, I am pondering a problem that one of my oils uh, raindrop therapy clients has. And I'm like, how can we address this problem? It is an oil application problem. How can we address this problem? And so I you know, looked online, I did some research, and I Googled, and there was nothing to fix this problem. And all of a sudden, I saw a picture of an invention, very, very, very simple to do, that will solve this problem. So then I told Kent, I've got another invention, so we're going to have to work on yours and work on mine. He said, okay, guys, you've got to capture those opportunities. You know what I mean? You have to. Some of you have them sitting right in front of you, Okay. Gigi, he worked for people, and he has a nice income and stuff. That was his call. That's what he was supposed to do. So there's nothing wrong with that. But again, the majority of people, if you want to gain wealth, you're going to have to be a business owner. Okay? Number four, putting trust in God results in life and blessing, even in drought. The heart is so deceitful, you might not realize that you're putting trust and other things or people. And one word comes to mind, codependency. If you are too dependent on someone else or something else, it's actually become an idol, and it prevents the Lord from extending his arm to help you because you're trusting in another arm. Okay? Now, I want to read to you Genesis 26. Verses 1 through 3, and then 13 and 14. And this, this passage describes perfectly Jeremiah 17. It says, There was a famine in the land, 
besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gerar, and the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I tell you. So Egypt, if he had chosen that, would have been trusting, putting his trust in someone else, okay? So he's like, no, 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 stay in the land of drought. Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give all these lands, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. Now this is important because Abraham had gone to Egypt during a drought, okay? And... Uh, on this situation, it would have made perfect sense to go to Egypt in a drought. But God's like, no, this is a totally different situation. In this situation, you're to stay here. So what that means is even when you hear testimonies of what other people do, you still have to get your strategy. You know what I mean? You still got to hear God, what he's saying specifically to you. Because it is not a one-size-fits-all. All right? And then in verse 13, it says, The man began to prosper. Oh, wait, verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Three, three, three prospers in that one verse. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herd and a great number of serv servants. So the Philistines envied him. Okay, so with prosperity comes envy. But anyway, guys, this, I researched how bad this drought was. Nothing. There was no rain. No one else could grow anything. And this man produced a harvest of a hundredfold. That blows me away. And then the final scripture is in John 15, 5, which very clearly uh, illustrates what we're talking about tonight. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. And so he's talking about bearing fruit. Remember, those that trust in the Lord bear fruit. And so what he's saying is, if you trust in me, you will be very fruitful in the land. And trust requires action. Okay? And so it's very important. What will happen and here's the clue. If it scares you to take risk, if it scares you to give when he's saying to give and you don't have enough money and we've all been there, I've been there, if it scares you to do those things, that is an opportunity to examine your heart. Do I trust him or not? Or do I put my trust in the money in my bank account or my job or whatever it is? The other side of that is, I was talking to a young couple, and this guy gave his money away so much that he didn't even have food. And he said, God had to teach me. He gives seed to the sower, and bread, or gives seed to sow, and bread to eat. So you have to, again, balance wisdom with what he's telling you to do. So putting your trust in man, systems, yourself, are all open doors to poverty. Does that make sense? It really blessed me. I'm like, oh my goodness. I wonder, you know, like, just to examine the areas where I'm doing that. Do, do you have any questions? All right. <clears throat> um, does anybody need an envelope? Because I'm going to pray over uh, over the offering. Hmm? When you were talking about inventions, that was prophesied about 25 years ago to me. Mm-hmm. I've been an invention. And I've spoken for years. Maybe it's a time to have a strategy session with the Holy Spirit and ask Him what it is. Because yeah. I find, actually, when I begin to set aside time to ponder, you know, I'll set aside time to just begin to really think about things that uh, are problems or whatever, He'll start downloading ideas. So a lot of it isn't so much that He's not giving them, it's just that we need to take the time to ask Him, okay, what is this? You know, and then you start getting into an anointing where the ideas begin to flow. And what's amazing is God will begin to bring people into your life that actually aid uh, that anointing. And uh, I have had two dreams, and I can't remember the first one, but it had to do with prosperity. And then I had a dream, it was very brief, it was either Claudel or Rodney, I can't remember, and they write my face and they said, prosperity has been assigned to you. 
Now what that means is prosperity has been assigned to this place, to the furnace. And I have heard testimony after testimony in the last week of people just all of a sudden they got all of this opportunity, uh, income, uh, new jobs, whatever it is. I got double what, no, more than double what I was supposed to get on my refund. Like, I got earned income credit and I don't have no kids. <laughs> okay. like, normally, That's awesome. When you have kids, I was just like, when I looked at it and it finished, I was just like, <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> and did you point it out? Like, you know, I have kids, are you sure? Yep, I went back, well, I did it on my huh. tax, so no. Well, <laughs> um, I've got another testimony I almost forgot. Um, when me and uh, Christine were in Arizona, uh, Nancy Stovall, she had invited this uh, young couple with their little bitty baby. How old was Rivers? Maybe four months? Tiny, tiny. And he had, I don't even remember what it was, but like his spine was doing this weird thing. And there were some other problems. They were going to have to do some surgery. And it's crazy. And so they were really upset about it. And um, so we all gathered around little baby Rivers. And um, we were praying. Well, all of a sudden I realized, wait a minute, and I saw his spine like a river. And I'm like, his spine's not supposed to be like a river. It's an attack of his name. It's an attack of his identity. And so they got done praying, and then uh, Gerald says, uh, Pastor Sherry, <laughs> which I was like, stop calling me that. But anyway, do you have anything to pray? I said, yeah, I do. And so I went against him, the attack of his name. I said, your spine will be straight as an arrow. And uh, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Then everybody else has some things. Got the report, what, day before yesterday? Did the MRI, nothing's wrong with them. Completely healed. Wow. And I was like, man, that is awesome. Come on, guys, excitement. Really okay. Awesome. <laughs> so, I mean, I said that maybe, because it's always going to be prolonged time, huh? like a long time of surgeries. So, um, does anybody else have any other testimonies? Anything before we pray? I graduated from my class I was taking. Yay! Yeah. Victory! Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I can confirm though you get all this revelation because God's like, I have that Bible app and it sends you daily scriptures and like every day for the past two weeks it sent stuff about prosperity. Mm -hmm. And then like every time I'd open the Bible it would say something about prosperity. Well, one thing that Gary Cassie says is the wealth of the nations are saved up for the wicked, right? But the problem is a lot of Christians are not, number one, ready uh, to receive the wealth. And number two, uh, they think they're just going to come to their house and hand over their possessions. You know, and it comes through business. It comes through the marketplace. So, all right, well, let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much for your word. We're so grateful for your presence. We're uh, so grateful for Holy Spirit. And, Father, I'm just so thankful for everyone in this place and the heart of hunger. Father, I hear it from anybody that comes how hungry we are. And so I ask, Father, that we remain hungry, we remain thirsty for your presence, that we want more of you, and we never get satisfied, we never get content, but we, we want you. And, Father, I decree over everyone in this room that uh, when you give us revelation, when you give us direction out of the intimate place with you, that we will uh, act on it and operate on it. And Father, we know that what you show us and what you tell us is your strategy, and we can be confident and have the faith to carry it out. So Father, I ask that you show us areas where you've already talked to us that we should be doing and pursuing as a business, areas where you've given a word about inventions, uh, Father, any area where we have dismissed it as, well, that couldn't possibly work, or I don't know how to do that, or whatever it is, whatever excuses, Father, I ask that you forgive us for holding your direction in light esteem. And Father, I ask you to forgive us for not being willing to put the effort into the ideas you have given us. And so, Father, I ask for a divine release of strategies, ideas, and ways to produce other sources of income. And I ask that you give us financial strategies that cause us to be debt-free, even our houses, and that we will be able to position ourselves for the wealth transfer. 
And I ask that you raise upon us a heart of Boaz and anointing of Joseph in which everything we set our hand to do prospers and that we are marketplace uh, wealth producers that fund the kingdom of God. So, Lord, we give you praise and honor, and we confess and decree that we trust you. And I ask you to show us anywhere in our heart where we have put trust in another person, in ourselves, or in a system. And so, Father, we give you honor. I ask that you bless the seed sown. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have any of you started, can you turn it off? Have any of you started reading uh, Dennis Renier's book they brought? I 